Well, what they call it now is disruptive change. When I first saw that word, I, I thought that was a bad thing. But no, disruptive is, is good disruption. It's changing everything we do. It's the electrification. It's, it's all the technology I'm going to talk about. It's disruptive change. And as an engineer and being in technology and being in transportation right now, this is probably, it's got to be one of the most exciting times. I don't know, maybe when they went to cars from horse and buggy. That was pretty exciting. But aside from then, this has got to be the most exciting time to be in that field because it's changing so fast, the acceleration. Smart cities, you, you hear about it, you read about it. Um, it's based on the transportation network. Um, it's based on the fiber optic that we'll put in the ground. It's based on the equipment that we put in signals. Um, it's, the, it's the internet of things. It's smart lighting, smart watering, smart parking. Um, you know, you name it, if there's infrastructure, you can make it smart by connecting it to everything else, and largely that's being done through transportation, um, even broadband access. You know, we talk about access, about how it's, you know, highways and roadways are access. Well, broadband is access too, and guess what? Broadband is now part of transportation, part of transportation networks. Uh, mobility as a service, MOS. Um, you know, you've seen the Ubers and Lyfts, and you've seen the push that's coming um, towards not owning your automobile. You know, you, you'll use your automobile as a utility. You'll pay some monthly rate like you do for your electricity or, or, or for any other service you have, and you'll access your vehicle to, do, to, to travel. Um, it's coming. It's here. The point about, about employment is that here come a trends in engineering. We already have two cities that don't have a PE professional engineer in charge of public works. That, that didn't exist 30 years ago. That didn't exist 20 years ago. But it's a trend, and, and you'll kind of see why. They all use consultants for that function because they, it's become too technologically advanced to keep on board a full-time equivalent staff and pay their retirement and pay all their benefits. It's become too technical for cities. That didn't exist 30 years ago. And we basically found out, according to our researchers, that about uh, maybe 60, 70 percent of the jobs are probably going to go away in their current form. Um, and so I want to talk to you about that's a bad thing if you have one of those jobs, but it's also a really good thing because there's uh, we think there's a lot of opportunities going on. So I want to talk about automation. I want to talk about new technologies. Um, a little bit about. Uh, how some of the transportation projects are changing and how that creates some job opportunities. In the transportation side, one of the things I see happening is more of a use of automation and um, kind of augmenting humans for construction and repair work. And so here's an example. This is called a cobot, or this is one of the new terms, which is basically a human-directed robot. So this robot is you know, jackhammering, uh, looks like, you know, slabs, and it's under direction of a person. So what's important to notice is normally this would be, you know, we've seen guys with jackhammers out. So now they're working on robots that operate under the direction of a person. And what's interesting about this is you can have a person overseeing multiple robots, and that's the direction we think that it's going to go. People are going to be using machines to expand, supplement their work, but if you are smart, communicate well, get along with other people, flexible, you're going to be in demand. And so what I would say from, in terms of future students, we should be training them in specific skills like cybersecurity, but we should also recognize that they, that may not be their only career. They may do other things. So we really need to also be teaching the kids how to learn, how to be flexible. And here's the other thing is, in a world full of robots, Customer service and how you deal with people is going to be really important. So there's going to be these instances in which these jobs will come up and people say, oh, that's great, I can move in that field. That's fantastic. But you need to be flexible and realize that job may not be there in five years. So even more so, this idea that you start a profession, you get a profession in that profession for 40 years, that's probably going to go away for a lot of people. So keep in mind, just because you're doing something now, doesn't mean you're going to do it in even five years or 10 years. Um, so let's have, let's make sure we have a generation of kids who are well trained, who are also flexible and um, communicate well.
Our goal is really to meet the college completion of the Coachella Valley, right? There are no four-year universities in the Coachella Valley. We have a need. We want to help students complete their degree. Many of them are place-bound and can't be traveling anywhere or don't have the opportunity to travel, care for their parents, care for their families, work in the region, and we want to make sure that we can provide the needs of those and being sensitive to, again, the future um, of the economy. Finally, as I started out with our mission statement, I just want to say that we um, are actively engaged in the vitality of our region, and um, I think we all help us define our future of the Coachella Valley, and certainly we adopt that motto um, and tagline on our campus about defining the future. So thank you for your time, and I'll stop here. Good. Thank you.